get a grip upon your chairs and hold your children tight. A mighty feud is starting and you'll see it all tonight. The Clampett clan is fighting mad, their honor's been besmirched. Sweet Ella Mae's been courted, but the darling ain't been churched. <laughs> Was young Sonny Drysdale that courted her and fled. And now the Drysdale family will feel hot clampet lead. Cause stranger, you don't trifle with a hillman's daughter fair. Or you will face his rifle and he'll deeply part your hair. <laughs> now here's the handsome rascal that started this here feud. A Harvard, Yale, and Princeton man, a shifty city dude. His game was love and run away, cause that's the way he lives. But they don't allow such doings with their female relatives. <laughs> so now they're on their way next door, a loaded up for bear. And if my name was Drysdale, I'd be getting out of there. Cause mountain justice does demand that when a wrong's been done, the kin of him that done it must also face a gun. <laughs> now Sonny noticed Ellie Mae beside the swimming pool, and when he seen her figure, he lost his yen for school. He wrapped himself up in a towel and played upon his lyre, and while he twanged, the songs he sang did set her heart afire. <laughs> he drove his fancy auto up and took her out to spark. And all alone, unchaperoned, he kept her after dark. He took her in the parlor and he taught her to be grand. He showed her how to walk and talk and tried to kiss her hand. <laughs> he took her to his private room to see his loving cup. And a man that wins a prize for that ain't on the up and up. He wooed her with a tango and a rose betwixt his teeth. A smiling on the outside, but a leering underneath. <laughs> even had a wedding dance and he joined in the fling. He brought along his dancing shoes but didn't bring no ring. The Clampets was a planning for a wedding in the veil, but they was duped. He flew the coop and went running back to Yale. <laughs> and now the Clampet clan is here to even up the score. I wouldn't want to be the man who opens up that door. He'll have to face their fury on revenge they are intent. And if his name is Drysdale, his life ain't worth a cent. It's that butler fella. Where will you clap its learn? There are no possums to hunt in Beverly Hills. <laughs> the possums we's after, it's Drysdale. Well, they're not at home. Mrs. Drysdale returned to Boston with Sonny. And Mr. Drysdale's at the bank. Let's shoot him. There ain't gonna be no shooting unless it's talk first. When will Mr. Drysdale be home? Uh, not until late this evening. That's talk enough. Let's go to shoot. Oh, uh, Granny, you can't shoot on our man. That's right. I lost my head. Here. Now, when death row count three, we go at it. One, two. Oh, hold on. Mr. Butler here ain't done us no wrong. He's one of their clan. I said there ain't going to be no shooting unless it's talk first. I'll speak to Mr. Drysdale. Thank you kindly, Mr. Butler. Yes. Thank you very kindly, Mr. Butler. Why didn't you ask him to dance with you? I was ashamed of you in front of these young ones. Is that any way to learn them feuding? <laughs> oh, it takes my family to know how to feud. Why, we drove the Botkins clean out of Napoleon, Tennessee, chased them off, burnt their shack, and shovel their footsteps off the path. Hot diggity dog. That's what I call feuding. I'm sure proud to come from a family like yours, Granny. That was the Moses family. Too bad our blood is being thinned out, cooled off, and watered down with the clampet blood. Now, Granny, you just simmer down to a boil. I'll see the right thing is done by my daughter. Jethro, you drive me down to the bank. 
Drysdale and me will have a man-to-man -man talk. <clears throat> Ain't you about a man and a half short? <laughs> Go and see Mr. Drysdale. You flush him out, Uncle Jed. I'll get him on the run. <laughs> now, who told you to bring that? Granny. She says there's got to be one fighting man in the family. <laughs> you just drive around a while and cool off. Pick me up here in about a half hour. Okay, Uncle Jed. It's lost a man. Their leader now is Granny from the fighting Moses clan. <laughs> Granny learned her feuding while a child on mother's knee when the Moses drove the Botkins from Napoleon, Tennessee. <laughs> her along as kind of an extra. <laughs> no, not unless they captured one of our women folks. Ellen May, you go in there and surrender. Well, I ain't gonna do it. Jeffro, put her down. How about I towed her as far as home and then let her escape? A little at a time. <laughs> Wait, what's the meaning of this? He's the one we want. You towed him, Ellie. My arms is full. <laughs> Jeffro, put her down before I take you to the woodshed. You look awful busy, Granny. Uh, maybe I should go to the woodshed and wait for you. I think I'd better call the police. Stop! Your tracks while you're able to make them. Now you turn around. Walk towards our house. I refuse to take one step. Now, you want to walk or you want to limp? <laughs> you better run to the telephone, please. Never mind her, Jethro. Shoot the telephone wire. What's having your mind on women can do to you? It took you two shots to get that wire. Oh, uh, Granny, I got two wires. 
Good work, Lieutenant. You've apprehended what is obviously a very dangerous criminal. I'm coming over and personally hand the reward money to you and your men. What's that? Oh, just to you. <laughs> very well. Miss Hathaway, perhaps you'd like to drive me over to police headquarters. You're interested in psychology. I'm completely intrigued with the subject. But what's the connection? The fellow who tried to rob our bank must be a complete nut. They've got two psychiatrists with him. What are his psychotic symptoms? He claims to have $25 million. Oh! <laughs> no, it couldn't be. <laughs> I keep a telling you and a telling you, I got $25 million in Mr. Drydale's bank. No, you didn't. They caught you before you got a penny. <laughs> Patient, Doctor. Obvious delusions of grandeur. Now, tell me, about this bank attempt, did you have any accomplices? Any what? Confederates. Oh, yeah, Granny. She's a Confederate. She's a Tennessee Moses. <laughs> Tennessee Moses? That's right. Tell me, did she... Lead her people out of Tennessee. Sure did, after they whooped the Botkins. <laughs> Don't you mean the Egyptians? Well, they probably whooped the Egyptians, too, if they got in their way. Granny's folks was fighting food. <laughs> they certainly were. They defeated the best fighters Pharaoh had. I don't know about that, but they whooped the best fighters Napoleon had. <laughs> Napoleon. Doctor, may I? You may not. I'm the one who uncovered this hallucination. <laughs> Tell me about Napoleon. Yes. <laughs> you say Granny's folks won that fight? They sure did. Over Napoleon? Oh, yeah. They tromped all over Napoleon. Fabulous. But how were they able to do it? Did they fight with superior weapons? Oh, they fought with Botkin. <laughs> I see. And uh, Napoleon didn't have any Botkin. Not after Granny's folks got through with him, Napoleon didn't have a Botkin left. <laughs> I remember the last day of the feud, they got Leif and Luke and Odds. Odds? Odds Botkin. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Just for a minute. Perfectly safe to look at him through the bars. After all, it's... Mr. Clavin! What the world? Mr. Gene, Mr. Drysdale, he sure didn't treat me very good over to your bank. My first visit, too. Let this man out of here. He's got $25 million in my bank. Open this door. Open it. Open it. <laughs> Lie down, mister. <laughs> Can I go back and get the other one now? No, you can't. You keep your mind on your feud. Close the gates. Yes, ma'am. Throw up the barricade. Yes, ma'am. Good. Here. You walk simply while I check the lookout. Harry May! Any sign of the enemy yet? <laughs> Not yet, Granny. All clear. Sound the alarm if you see a Drysdale a coming. I will, Granny. You see, all my employees are trained to be on the lookout for bank robbers. So, naturally, when they saw you walk in with your rifle, their first instinct, well, it, well, it appeared to them that it was just... Well, it was, you're not mad, are you, Mr. Clavett? Well, no, we're not about the bank, but uh, we's all right upset at Sonny for uh, running off and jilting Ellie May. Sonny? Jilting Ellie May? Well, that's what we'd call it. He sparked her for two weeks running. Took her driving, dancing, held her hand, kept her out past dark. Back where we come from, that's just the same as saying, will you? Provided the girl is 12 or better. <laughs> Mr. Clavin, you have my word of honor. I had no idea that Ellie May or Ed took Sonny seriously. Now, the moment we get to your house, I'm going to telephone Sonny in Boston. Get him on the first plane, and he'll be here tonight to propose marriage to Ellie May. Well, now, that sure is going to smooth Granny's ruffled feathers. She's been madder than a barefoot centipede standing on a hot rock. She'll be happy when we get there. Yes, bless her sweet little heart. Granny, I say, I'm coming. How many is they? Maybe 
Miss Hathaway and Mr. Drysdale. They sold him Paul Preston. Come on now. We'll stop him at the gate and blast him at the barricade. <laughs> Will you, Granny? Don't worry, honey. I can hit a new laid egg out of the nest without budging the hen. <laughs> Stop where you are. Stay right there. Granny, it's me, Mr. Drysdale. I'm coming in. Let's get out of here. Here's the Drysdale mansion where he's fleeing like a rat Since Granny put a bullet through his $20 hat But even here he can't escape the scourge of Tennessee Cause she's got Ellie spying from the tip top of a tree Granny, they took Paul to the Drysdale's house Come on down, we'll go get him Well, I reckon we'll have to call her on the telephone Granny's feuding, she's sometimes hard to reason with. Reckon seeing you with that rifle kind of set her off. But that woman shot at me. Oh, Mr. Drydale, she shot at your hat. If that little old woman ever goes to throwing lead at you, you'll be casting a polka dot shatter. Marie, <laughs> Ravenswood, why don't you answer the door? Oh, thank goodness it's you. The Clampets came and captured Ravenswood. Captured him? Yes, and Jethro picked me up in his arms. He helped me and held me and wouldn't put me down. Why? He said it was feuding. Well, now, don't you worry, Marie. We're going to get this whole thing all straight now. Marie, tell me more about your frightening experience with Jethro. Well, there was a knock. I opened the door, and Jethro just swept me up into his big, strong arms, held me tight, and wouldn't let me go. And he said that was feuding? Yes. That's why I was afraid to open the door right now. Marie, you've been through a shattering ordeal. Go and lie down. I'll watch the front door. <laughs> Come on, Jethro, we're going back to the Drysdale's house. Ha, diggity dog, that's the part of feuding I like. <laughs> we're taking you with us, Mr. Butler. And if they harm one hair on Jed, that one hair you got will pay the price. Oh, won't you please listen to me? Mr. Drysdale's not feuding with you. He's a peaceful man. He's never shot anything but skeets. Skeets? How many did he get? We did very well. 98 out of 100. That's better than we did with the Botkins. <laughs> Ready, Granny? Come on, young ones. We got our feuding cut out for us. That Drysdale's our shooting fool. <laughs> Shoot you. Don't you let it touch the ground. Throw it to Jethro as you're falling. I'll do it, Granny. What'd you do that for? If there's any long-range shoot, they'll think he's one of us and drop him first. <laughs> Forward! March! <laughs> hmm. No wonder the phone wouldn't work. Marie said Jethro shot down the wires. Well, we can go next door and use a Miller's phone. Yep. Been cut with a rifle bullet. Kind of ragged, though. Jethro must have been upset. That's bad shooting to cut those little wires with a rifle? Why, when that boy puts his mind to it, he can pick a gnat off a plate of grits at 500 feet in a heavy fog. <laughs> I'm the only one who can outshoot him. Except for Granny and Ellie May. <laughs> well, what skeet shooters you'd make? What skeet? Oh, they're clay pigeons. That's what I shoot. Clay pigeons? Oh, it's wonderful. I love it. Your wife must be a first-rate cook. <laughs> now, 
Here comes Granny's little band to free their leader, Jed. And anyone that blocks their path might just as well be dead. For though their numbers may be small, the flag that leads their way is the flag that led Pickett's charge at Gettysburg, PA. <laughs> idea. We'll use Mr. Butler here as a decoy, and we'll surprise him. What you mean, Granny? You knock on the door, and you yell to him inside that it's you. Then we'll rush in and we'll get Jim. And maybe somebody else, too, huh, Granny? <laughs> you keep your mind on your feuding. Come on. Ravenswood, open up. Marie! You may open it. <laughs> Nothing to be afraid of, it's just Ravenswood. Step aside, decoy. Ellie, you guard him. Get so. When they open the door, we'll rush him. <laughs> yeah! Where's Jim? What'd you do with him? Oh. Talk fast! Oh, th 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 he's not here. He's next door with, with Mr. Drysdale. Search the house, Jethro. Jethro! Jethro! Yeah, Granny? Put her down. She's light as a feather. Put her down and go look for your Uncle Jed. Now go search the house. Now, Je Jethro, you're, un you're unfamiliar with the place. I'll show you around. <laughs> What'd you do that for? A feud is a feud. <laughs> Granny, here comes the party, Mr. Drysdale. I'll pick that varmint off like I picked a bodkin off a rail fence. Hey, hey, what in the world are you doing? Guarding the decoy, Paul. Ravensword, you Boston Yankee. Bear your head in the presence of our flag. <laughs> See our flag? My family came from Tennessee. Mine did too. Jed, I always did like this man. Why, sure, Granny, and he's going to make Sonny do the right thing by Ellie Mae. What does that mean, Paul? Want to make Sonny come back here and marry you? I don't want to marry Sonny. You see, Granny, the whole doggone feud was for nothing. Not altogether, Jed. Why, we might never have known that Mr. Drysdale here was a fine gentleman from Tennessee. Yeah. Tell me, ever hear of the Moses family? Hear of them? Why, my mother's family feuded with them for years. <laughs> you mean your mother was a bodkin? <laughs> Drysdale, don't ask me why. I just commenced to running. You heard him. Run, you yellow bodkin! I am a Moses. <laughs> For a city feller, he sure can run. Like a scared rabbit. Well, let's go home. Yeah. Put her down. Oh, listen, Granny. I heard you and Uncle Jed talking about what to get me for Christmas. This here will save you shopping. Well, you can't take her home for Christmas, now put her down. One of these days, I got to have a long talk with this boy. <laughs> 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 